I'm Gene Grant here at the line table with this week's opinion panelists. Let's end with the latest news on a contract between Taser International in the city of Albuquerque. And Tom, let me start with you. The Inspector General, Peter Pacheco, said the report that the, uh, his office has found probable violations by former police chief Ray Schultz mm -hmm. in, the, in the city's rules against conflict of interest and in accepting meals and perks. As I read this, it's, it sounds like that language was pretty strong. How did it initially hit you that uh, it sounds like what it is, somebody broke the law here? Well, I, I'll take issue with that. I Please. don't think it was very uh, strong. I mean, it, was, it sounded like it could have been strong, but mm -hmm. there were so many disclaimers, like okay. probable, you know, the appearance of, you know, he never really came out and said, here's what actually I think happened. Okay. And, you know, from that perspective, I think it's a, it's a lesson on how do you provide a mm -hmm. very committal, non-committal report. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I was kind of disappointed with it because they had a chance to, I think, to really kind of, you know, set a particular story, but instead they just submitted a lot of ambiguity. Interesting. Uh, we've got Rob Perry, the mayor, and an, uh, another committee looking at this thing. Maybe this language isn't quite quite right. How did you, what was your read on this? Well, I just, I just think, you know, if I was advising the mayor, mm -hmm. which I'm not, mm -hmm. um, I, you know, deciding about splitting hairs about the language right now is probably not the avenue I'd be going down. Yeah. I would take ownership, fix it, say it's not going to happen anymore on my watch. I right. want to support people getting it done. This, I think the public is getting tired of this. You know, it's not my fault, it's her fault, but sure. it's really his based on what you said. Right. I, I think people are dying for leadership. And I think once again, you know, the city of Albuquerque is missing an opportunity for someone to step forward as a leader and say, mm -hmm. enough's enough, the buck stops here, I'm going to fix it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As we take this, Senator Feldman, you never know, and given what Dan just said, you know, the mayor may have come out just before this airs on Friday night uh, and, and, and done exactly this, but is he on to something, Dan Foley, here that the public's looking for somebody to say, look, you know, something was it smelled bad enough that we don't support this. That we I don't agree like with this. Dan. Oh, I oh agree my with gosh. Dan. Yes. <laughs> wow, hand holding and everything. Yes. Is that a special but, 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 <laughs> but, 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 but the thing is, is uh, you know, okay, there are three different uh, organ organizations that have said there was wrongdoing here. Yeah. There's the state auditor, there's the internal Albuquerque auditor, and now's the, now there's the inspector general. And then the administration comes and says, well, maybe not. Probably, perhaps. Mm -hmm. The question hinges on how far through the revolving door was he at the time mm -hmm. the, uh, that he, uh, you know, Mm -hmm. The contract was let. So sure. it looks terrible for the administration. I agree with and you. And then, Russell, the Accountability and Government Oversight Committee, and that's the body approved by councilors and the mayor, uh, getting to Senator Feldman's point, so, you know, describes the findings as possible and potential. They have in quotes here in the journal piece. Getting to Tom's point, it's just a little vague for them. But again, for the public, does it feel vague to the public? I'm wondering, if, you know, how they're going to read into this. But the narrative right now is, especially with the DOJ, and you have, you still have some protesters here and there. They're going to say, sure. "Well, this is this is par for the course. Here they go again, doing a cover up." And again, the cover up is always worse than the crime. Yeah. If there's anything to cover right. up, just throw it out there. Right. If you throw it out there and say it's our fault, we'll fix it. Right. You you can't. You don't have a response to that. You sure. can say, "Okay, we're, we're." And especially right now is a perfect time to do it mm -hmm. with the DOJ. Right. And there's a there's this this environment that everybody wants to finally do something. Everybody right. wants to come together. Together. We're going to have these community meetings. Let's do something together. This is an opportunity for sure. To all. And what I don't understand is, is this: this is not where I fail to see the political part of this. Is this is not R.J. Barry's chief? I mean, this is Thank not. You. So I'm I mean, for it, there, to there, say that. you don't have to say <laughs> yeah. I'm defending my guy. Exactly. And now the only thing I will say is a caveat that could be happening here is. I believe, from the little bit of stuff that I read, that regardless of whether he's guilty, there's really nothing you can do to him. He's no longer an employee. He's retired. He's gone. No, there's really, there's really no. not much that they no. can do Mr. to him. Mr. Had, had a different take being on being referred to the mm -hmm. Attorney General. Yeah. There's a violation of the Governmental Conduct Act and the Procurement Code. I think there are so some essential things. Keep him on. So if I mean, that, yeah. so if that, well, yeah, but it's not his guy. So, so I now, mean, it's his guy. but it's not his guy. I mean, he kept the guy on from someone else. He didn't hire him. He, he had the decision. I, I get that. Yeah. Well, I mean. What, what, what are we splitting hairs here? Well, it's probably. A thick, it's a thick hair. Uh, yeah, However, you know, it's a probable possible. cause. Well, but Tom, possible. Tom makes an interesting <laughs> point. I mean, it's like it's yeah. sort of your point. Why, if it's not his guy anymore? Right. And this came out on Wednesday. What's the hesitation here? The you only hesitation. The only hesitation say, then could be you know, that 
that what they're finding out he did wrong, and I'm not defending him by any means, sure. is that, you know, it could have been wrong place, wrong time, you know, really didn't do this stuff, but because of the way the governmental conduct code was written, like the Senator's talking about, this guy could go to jail then. And so now everybody's wanting to step back and say, we really don't want the guy to go to jail, gotcha. we want the contract to end, we want to go do this the right way, but the end result is we don't want a retired police chief going to prison. Right. So that could be the reason why there's some tempering of, sure. of these comments. Tom, given what Russell just said, you know, there's an overarching thing here. There's a big old cloud. You can mm -hmm. see DOJ J and the you know, I would think this would make people come to quick decisions just to move on to the next thing here. Well, it's funny, you know, when you have the DOJ cloud kind of hovering over yeah. you, it can either really promote decisions quickly or people are second guessing going, gotcha. well, should we say something? Should we come out hard on this? Gotcha. Or are we just going to wait for the DOJ? Overall, to answer the question you asked at the beginning, yeah. uh, this doesn't pass the smell test. Okay. And so I think that there's enough there that, you know, everybody's going, hmm, you know, there's uh, additional items to look into. Right. Counselors are going to weigh in, we can suppose right now. I mean, uh, I'm sure that, you know, uh, I, we got a bipartisan yeah. group it's, of yeah, counselors. It's a, it's a it's we got a bipartisan group of counselors that sent and the request up to Hector Balderas. I mean, it wasn't there, just one. It's a number of Counselors yeah. who have taken on a variety of number of issues that right. uh, don't have anything directly to do with the city. Right. Uh, Santalina being one of them. So, you know, I wouldn't be surprised to see them continue on with uh, That's with right. This. Senator, he was making, a, he being Chief Schultz at the time, $1,000 a day. That's big money around these parts for consulting people. You, you know what I mean? And that the city may have, add to your list of woes here for the Attorney General, we may not have gotten the best deal on these things, it may turn out, because of this. We didn't hear from competitors. We didn't hear from other right. folks. You see what I mean? So the public may not have been served quite well, even if it was just sort of a slippery, when did he leave, when, did he, when was he still on? There's bigger issues, it seems to me. Right, and that is the public getting the best deal for tax dollars. Right. And when you have corruption or when you have conflict of interest, that's less likely. Mm -hmm. And so I think that, you know, that's the question. Um, was he $1,000 a day for consulting uh, after he was uh, finished with mm -hmm. getting all of his benefits and salary from the public dime here in uh, New Mexico might not be so bad. But if, he, if, it was, if there was a crossover there, then that's a problem. Right. Do you anticipate council uh, uh, weighing in on this saying, we want, to, we want some new rules here about how this works? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. they'll do that. They'll mm -hmm. say this is part of a, a process. Yeah. Yeah. They'll, they'll want to include it. Interesting. Thank you all for joining us. Great Friday night stuff. Really good stuff. I'm Gene Grant. As always, we appreciate your time and effort to stay informed and engaged. And we'll see you next week in Focus. Get a preview of what's coming up on the next New Mexico in Focus. It's easy. Sign up for our weekly email at NewMexicoInFocus.org.